learned how to do pretzies, so don't be too harsh on them right now, but like I'm trying my best. Um, I'm, I, like after high school, I worked for a year and then I traveled around the world for 13 months. And um, I want to share with you why I did it, why I think it's really, really important for people to do it, and what my experiences are, and we'll give you some tips on, on how to make the most out of your travels if you do decide to do so. So, I traveled on a very, very low budget and I traveled all by myself. So, um, I'll tell you how to travel the world by yourself and on a really low budget. So, first of all, I think you need to understand something about society. For society, this circle is really, really important. If you want to have a functioning society in capitalism, then you need people to believe this. Well, at least that is my belief. So, I can only speak about my own country because that's the only place I grew up in. So in Germany, you're expected to have a quite nice childhood, then you go to school, then you go to university, maybe you do some traveling here in between, um, but nothing too fancy. It's completely fine if you go to Australia for a couple of months and party it up with some Germans and then improve your English, although I must say that I've never spoken as little English as an Australian. Because 90% of the backpackers there are Germans and they will speak German to you. Um, so yeah, it's fine to do a little bit of traveling and working. Then you go to university, directly after that you need to, of course, secure a very good job. Then you're supposed to get a family, reproduce, and then at some stage, 50, 60 years later, you are going into retirement and yeah, you're allowed to travel here, but you're supposed to go on really expensive trips that are part of your social status. You go to hotels, you, um, you visit to, and you go to Egypt for two weeks, and you come back and you can tell all of your friends how Egyptians are. Um, I don't think, like, this is not my idea of traveling, and this is not the idea that I had. When I was in school, I was really much opposing the system. I thought I didn't get anything out of it. I felt stuck. So I decided to do something completely different and decide with 16s that I would save up all my money and then go and uh, travel the world by myself. Well, originally I planned on going with a friend, but she chickened out. So I had the choice to also chicken out or do it myself. And I decided to do it myself. So when my teachers asked me, like five weeks before my final exams, because we were all sitting in a classroom and everyone was asked, so what are you going to do after school? And like after, and everyone was like, oh, I'm going to study engineer. That's the German thing to do. You go and study engineering if you're a guy. You go and study, I don't know, something else, mostly becoming a teacher a year ago. And um, I was there and I was saying, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just going to, work for a year and then I'm going to travel and everyone was like, no. Because these are the reactions that you get when you decide to travel after, by yourself, without a really concrete plan, after um, school. Uh, the reactions I got were like, you'll never do it anyway, so why are you planning for it? Like when I was like, oh I cannot spend this money because I'm saving it up, like no, no, you're not going to do it anyway. Um, no university or no company will take you after you come back. You wasted 15 months. What are you going to do? What are you going to write in your CV? You're just going to have this hole in your CV. No one's ever going to take you serious anymore. You get all these really, really scary things to hear. Um, my aunt told me that my gypsy life is irresponsible. I still don't talk to her anymore. <laughs> but like it's. Um, people don't see it as the right thing to do because you leave your family behind, you leave basically everything behind and you do something that's solely for yourself. People are like, okay, I give you one month and then you don't want to do it anymore and you fly back home. Or they say, are you not worried that you're going to get raped or killed if you're all by yourself in some weird countries where you don't speak the language? Other people say, don't you need a lot of money for this? Probably. Um, but actually, no, I travel for 600 euros a month, which is less, far, far less than I spent living on this campus, to be honest. Um, and they also are very worried that you become quite lonely, because if you travel by yourself, people think you're too much by yourself, and you will be really, really, really lonely. I don't experience that any of these things are true. 
I do think that the reason why I'm here at this university is because I traveled. Because my grades weren't great, I weren't as great as most other people that got into here. And I think that my travel showed at uh, UCU that I had the maturity and I had the motivation to become a good student and also to become a good... Ah. Um, yeah, to, to become a good part of this international community. It taught me English. My English was shit. I mean, German, like English of Germans, we don't, we don't have subtitles, we dub all our movies. So we are really, really, really bad at it after school, and we had it for nine years. Um, I didn't go back right away, because I chose to travel really far on my first step. The mistake many people make is that they go to France as their first stop, which is far too close to home. If, you, if that something goes wrong, you will go right back. If you're in Israel, you're not going to do that, because even coming, going to the airport is far more difficult than even um, yeah, figure like good, then just keep on going. Um, I did not get raped, nor did I get killed, and I don't think that there is so much more danger in traveling than uh, it is here. The reason why you feel safe is because you have your routine, you know where you're gonna be tomorrow, you know the surroundings you're gonna be in. But people here are also not all good, you know, there's, there's also um, natural disasters that could happen. There's also possi a possibility that when you go out, you're not going to get treated well. The, the point is you need to be careful for your safety in any place, just because you feel safer here, and because we get presented with this idea that other countries are super scary, and that police isn't good, um, doesn't mean that that's actually the truth you witness on the road. Uh, I never got lonely. I mean, the thing is that when you sleep in hostels, it's actually that you're hardly ever alone. You always make friends. And um, also being by yourself is quite nice, uh, as I experienced. Because even if I did a trip by myself, even if I hiked through the mountains for five hours by myself, you never have been that much by yourself before in your life. You always see yourself in perspective of other people. You always have different identities at different periods of your life. And if you finish high school, you're kind of scared because you're losing this identity of being a high school student. You're losing all your friends, everything is changing, and you don't know what to do about it. And you don't know who you are anymore. And I think that a lot of people make wrong decisions because of that. And I think that if you travel, um, you get to know who you are without having a respect to other people. You really are along with your own thoughts, and you make your decisions by yourself. You're not discussing them with your best friend, you're not discussing them with your parents, you're solely discussing them with yourself. And that gives you a lot of trust into yourself. Yeah. Um, all right, so this is where I went. I started in Israel, as I said, to make it absolutely difficult right away because I, I couldn't even read the street signs. I landed. I, I mean, I've never traveled before, right? Like, I, I went to some really nice hotels now and then, like in different countries, and I stayed there. Now and then, you do a day trip. I never traveled anywhere by myself, and I realized that. Just flying to a country without knowing anything is also not a very good idea. Because I had written down one hostel. When I landed though, I realized that um, sadly, in Israel at that time it was Passover, which is the holiday where everyone goes on holiday. So everyone travels somewhere. That somewhere is very often Tel Aviv, which is where I landed, and everything was booked. And I started walking around through the streets, trying to find a hostel, a hotel, anything I could afford. And I didn't. And at some stage, I was like, I don't know what to do anymore. So I decided to sleep on the beach, and I hiked towards the beach. And what I found, I, I met this guy on the road who was working for a restaurant, and he's standing out, he's like, hey, you're a backpacker, do you want to eat something? And I'm like, dude, I don't even have money to pay for my hotel right now, because all hotels are $120, so let me find a place, place to sleep first and then I come and eat dinner with you. And he's like, um, well, I know someone who rents out a place directly next to my place. It's like 60 shekels a night, which was too much for me as well. He's like, but you, you know, they're also looking for someone working. So 
if you feel like going to that restaurant and working with me, like just leave your stuff there, work a night shift, then we pay half of your accommodation. So by talking to one person, I found a place to stay, I found a job, and I found um, everything I needed in Tel Aviv. That guy also helped me later on to find the airport, set me up with some friends in different places, uh, took me out for really good beers. I met my really good friend Alejandra Nera, who is work also worked with me in that restaurant. It was a great, great thing to do, and I got the hang of traveling while doing so. So for Israel, I went to Singapore, then I flew to Perth, traveled around Australia, then I uh, flew to Vancouver, traveled around Canada, and then I flew to Costa Rica, traveled all the way down here to Bolivia. From Bolivia, I flew back to El Salvador, and then I traveled up here before I flew back to Europe. And I did all of this, as I said, by only spending 600 euros a month. And uh, I met the greatest people in the world, and it was basically the best part of my life, I would say. So, that is it. And from this, from my experience, I've got to tell you some things people do not know about traveling. Because the problem is that everyone you're going to talk to is not really going to know what you're talking about because they've never been, they never went. So if you ask your mom, should I go traveling or not, she's not going to say yes because she's going to be worried about you. If you ask your best friend, they're going to say no because they're worried about you. It's uh, really, really, really difficult for people to, to give you the, the right advice, I think, because they've never done it themselves. So things people do not tell you is that it's not holiday. You're not going to chill on the beach all the time. And you sleep really, really, really little. I think most of the sleep I got, I got in some 12-hour buses uh, where I really had nothing else to do to sleep. But in the world, there's so, so many things to do that you just never sleep. And in this case, in Australia, at the Devil Marvels, a friend of me decided to get up at 3 in the morning to like fill, make some cool pictures in the sunrise. And that happens all the time. And then mostly you go for beers at night. And then at night, the night gets long, you come back to your hostel, you sit in the dorm, and in the dorm people are sleeping with each other, so you don't get enough sleep there either. Um, it's quite a funny community to, to be a backpacker in that sense. You will never feel as free as you felt while you were traveling. This is in Via Galea. I spent uh, a month there on the Finca, staying there for free because the people were really, really happy, really, really hippies. And if you just hike a mountain by yourself, or if you just have a great view, you get this rush that you've never seen anything as pretty before, you've never seen anything as great. So you, you get this feeling of complete content that um, I've never experienced with anything. You feel like you and the world are exactly where you are supposed to be. And that is, um, that is something no one can ever take away from you. If you have a shitty time, you can you always have the backup option to go back to the place and feel the same way again. And that is amazing. Um, you make great friends quickly and you're never alone. I traveled with this guy around Australia for three weeks. Him and his ex-girlfriend. His name is Ron, he lives in Rotterdam. We still meet up for beers every other week or so. You make friends and they will always be there. And You'll encourage them. If they are travelers, you meet simply by the fact that you're both travelers. So one person will be close at some stage, and then the other person will be close at the other stage. However, if you meet people who are really, really local, you might mostly encourage them traveling because they they think it's great that you did it, and that's how um, that's how they get started with it. So they come visit you at some stage, and. I must say that the friendships that I made on this trip were some of the deepest that I've ever experienced because you skip all the bullshit. You don't have the time because you only have three days together. You don't have the time to figure out if you like that person or you want to spend your semester with them, doing projects with them. You don't have the time for that. So you start the first night after two hours drinking at the campfire. You start talking about life and you start talking about philosophy and you start talking about crisis and the worst things that happen to you in your life, and the um, best things that happen in your life. And at some stage of my trip, I made it my goal to find one crazy story and one very sad story from every person I met. 
And I'm, I'm, I hear so many stories I could write a book about it. And that is really, really great because it gives you the complexity of life in like such little things. Um, for me, going, not traveling, but going back home is the hard spot. Because if you come home, you believe that you stay the same person that you were. You're gonna be that traveler person, hippie style, you don't worry about grades, you're not gonna worry about um, success because society sucks anyway, and this is the real way, you can always go back to Costa Rica and be a barkeeper. That's true, but the sad thing is that as soon as you're back into the system, it's really, really, really easy to care about the system again. And you always have this longing to go back again, to go back and be with three again. And if you do it so, so early in your life, I think it's really, really, really hard to reintegrate. Especially because making friends here looks awful different from like making friends on the road. Um, so life on the road is cheap. And if you get stuck, there's always a job somewhere. These are two guys that I did a street performance with because uh, I was the only white person in the, in, uh, how do you say, in a group of people that were listening to them and they thought it would be funny to get a gringa play along with them and I tried to play along with my broken Spanish that I had and in the end they shared like their uh, money with me and it just came out of nowhere. And that's the thing, I have gotten so many job offers just by simply speaking a, word, a few words of Spanish or by, by simply being nice or by simply meeting people that want to help, out, help you out. And I think that once you're on the road, you could stay on the road forever if you would really want to do so. So, some tips. How to travel cheap. Um, you need to go local. Eat local food. Use local transport. Talk to locals. Stay with locals. Do everything local, as local as possible. Avoid flying and expensive visas. Don't go to countries that are really far off in the end. It was really a mistake to go to Australia. It was the biggest part of my budget and I didn't enjoy it enough to really justify it in that sense. Um, be charming and respectful to people always. Don't be a dick in general to locals. But you need to bargain. They're always going to rip, try to rip you off. What I did um, when I bought at markets was that I uh, I always knew the price of a little Coca-Cola. If you know the price of a little Coca-Cola, you go to a shop, you ask how much Coca-Cola costs, and if they tell you that price, you buy all your stuff there. And if they don't tell you that price, then you go on to the next person. There's always an upstands. It's a really, really easy way to figure out who's trustworthy and who isn't. Um, also, be always well informed. If you get into a bus, don't ask the bus driver how much the price is. Ask the guy who's sitting next to you. If you, um, if you know that there's a bus going directly to a place because you took your research, then no one can sell you a bus ticket going over five different, different cities and being twice as expensive. So if you, as long as you have a little bit of information, you can do well. Don't be picky. If you can stay in a, whole, in a hostel for three euros and they don't provide bedding and they only have cold showers but it's the beach and you only gonna shower cold anyway, then do it. Like, don't go for that expensive place that has fans because you're not really gonna need them. Um, well, think twice before doing an expensive activity. Don't go bungee jumping or whale watching in Canada. There's always a better place to do it somewhere. If you go to Vancouver and you go whale watching, it costs 220 euros. If you go to the St. Lawrence River, which is in Quebec, uh, you sit in a little kayak and you paddle across the St. Lawrence River, you see 10 times as many whales from far, far little distance for $15. Do your research, figure out where the cheap places are to go for these kind of things. And then you can also have the same experience or better experiences just for cheap. Um, yeah, keep an overview of your budget all the time. Say you wanted to spend 25 euros an hour a uh, day, then stick to that. And if you spend 20, 28 on one day, spend, then you need to spend 17 on the next. Just, you know, like just leveled up. I show you the picture of this guy because he's the first guy who made it across the world, every country in this world, without ever boarding a plane. And there's enough websites that show you how to do that. 
There's cargo ships you can bribe people to get on. There is uh, websites like Find a Crew where you can hire on a sailing trip because you're cheaper than getting an actual sailor. Um, there is couch surfing. There is there's various Facebook groups. There is work away. There are so, 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 so many options out there that help you to travel cheaply. Um, how to stay safe. Do not, my first advice is always, especially for girls, do not make yourself vulnerable. Know where you are, know where your hostel is at any time, know uh, which places are safe, which places are not safe. And if you're by yourself and you go out with two guys, don't get drunk. Just don't. Like, drink two beers and that's fine, but don't drink 20 and then wonder why you wake up somewhere in the park without underwear. Like, I, I, I really don't agree with the idea that it's women's fault if they get raped or something, but they're, in order to avoid it, you need to stop making yourself so vulnerable. You need to be careful. Um, again, be informed. In some sense, it's really, really fun to travel without any plan, but on the other hand, traveling without a plan can be super, super dangerous. I, and even if you have a plan, sometimes you still end up in a shitty situation. Um, I once in Ecuador, yeah, in Ecuador, took a bus to the border because I was sure I could still make the border crossing that day. Obviously, I arrived at, at that border town at 8 o'clock in the evening. It was dark. It was a jungle town. There were no traffic lights. There was nothing. I hear dogs barking. And believe me, I was just chased by wild dogs at this place. And it was not fun. And I didn't like dogs at the time, especially not in Ecuador. And I decided to walk around a bit and look for a hostel, but I didn't feel safe, so I walked back to the bus station and I asked the lady there in Spanish if there was any possibility that I could just sleep in a bus. Which they granted me. People are nice. People generally will help you. You just need to tell them that you need help. There's hardly anyone who will say no to a 20-year-old girl that reminds them of their daughter. And I don't mean that you should should use that in order to come around cheap. But what I'm saying is that if you're in a dangerous situation, that's a very important tool to make yourself. Um, don't take anything you would be sad to lose. You might lose it. And that would be really, really sad. Uh, don't take uh, the pen that your mom gave you for graduation. Don't take your favorite dress. It's going to get ripped and it's going to go away. You're going to leave it somewhere. Um, Always carry some small change, so if you get robbed, you can give them something. It's the worst idea to go out with nothing. I hear the story about this, this guy uh, who went to Guatemala, like I was at this lake, and he decided to go from village to village, although everyone told him not to. That's another thing, listen to the locals. If they tell you not to, just don't. Just really don't. So he won't, and he just decided not to take anything. He came back without any clothes at all. Because when he couldn't even provide them with like five pesos worth of something, um, they just took his clothes and made him walk back naked just to make a point. And if that happens to a guy, that's one thing. If that happens to a girl in Guatemala, that might be another thing. Um, avoid conflict. Uh, if they hold a gun at your hand, just do it. Like, just give it to them. The money, I mean. <laughs> Uh, also, have a good health insurance, except <coughs> if you're chased by dogs. You don't want to wonder whether your um, health insurance covers rabies, in fact, and like vaccinations or something. You don't want to wonder about that when you run away from dogs. So just get a good health insurance, that's one of the most important things. And if in danger, you need to act quickly. Yeah, that's all. Um, do you have any questions? Anything that struck you that you want to know more? Okay, all right.